here's a pattern that has all the usual suspects of almost every knitting pattern, sizes, the materials, the gauge, the directions. But this pattern also has one extra thing, which is right here. It's a knitting chart. And this chart is going to show you how to knit this skull that's on the sleeves of the sweater when it's done. So how do you read a chart like this? The first thing to know is that every box represents a stitch in most of these charts. It's also showing me here a key. This is telling me that when I see an orange box in the chart, it's supposed to be using the main color. And when I see a white box in the chart, I should be knitting that with the contrast color yarn. Obviously, the colors aren't white and orange, and they might not be black and white like in the project. I might be doing a, a sweater that's yellow and blue, and I'll decide which one is the main color and the contrast color. So how can we read this chart? The first thing to know that's really important is that a knitting chart always shows you what the front of the fabric looks like, the right side, the side of the fabric that is facing the world. It doesn't show you the wrong side of the fabric, what to do there. So here we're going to see that the first box on the lower right here is one. These are all numbered and that will help us remember that you read knitting charts from the bottom to the top. You work your way up with each row. Row one would be your first right side row and you read this from right to left. That's not so terrible because when you're knitting stitches, you're knitting them off the left hand needle working from right to left. So you would knit a main color, knit a main color, blah, 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 until you get here. You would knit with the contrast color. Each box is a stitch until you get to the end. So now you've just finished your right side row. You finished the row that faces. This is made in stockinette, so you've just finished making a knit row. Now you're up to the purl row, but I said this is only showing you the front of the fabric. Well, for the purl row, you have to read it the other way. So row two, you start by reading from the left do, 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 to there. Row three, you read back this way. Row four, you read back that way. And that's if you're knitting flat back and forth. This sleeve is knit flat. And if you think about it, that is really the way your fabric gets built up when you're knitting, right? It doesn't really get built like this. The yarn is actually traveling. It's making some stitches this way, and then it's making that row of stitches from that side, and it's making this row of stitches. It's just you have to be able to flip that around in your head a little bit. So the rows until I get all the way to the end of this chart, which is at row 51. Sometimes these boxes can stand for different stitches, like they want you to make a knit or they want you to make a purl. You'll always have a key that'll tell you what the boxes mean and you just do what it says. The one time that you don't read these charts the way I told you in this zigzag pattern is if you're reading a chart where you're knitting in the round. When you're knitting in the round, you never turn around and go back like you do when you're knitting straight. And then you would read every row from right to left, which is of course, a little bit easier because it corresponds to the way you're knitting the stitches off your needle. One last thing about charts. It's easy to lose track, so I like to use post-it notes. I just stick them right above the row that I'm about to work. So here, if I'm about to work row seven, I put them right there. And that way I can see not only what I need to do, but also I can use the stitches below as landmarks so I can know when I get to that white contrast color stitch on the row before, I need to make one in the row that I'm working also. And every time I finish a row, I just move them up to the next row and so on. A lot of people like to do it this way. They cover up the stitches they've done instead of putting it above. But like I said, I like to do it above so that I can use the stitches in the previous row as sort of landmarks and help me remember my place in the chart. And that's it. That's a knitting chart. Easy peasy.